lag is the worst in apex everybody agrees I, don't, I can't think of a single person who hasn't experienced it but i say enough i'm going to share with you the knowledge i have about computers which will help you identify why you're getting lag it may not just be the apex servers it might be something you can control now doing this is going to take a little bit of time it's going to take more than a day and you need to write stuff down that way you know the best settings that you've experienced to start this little journey we need information so other than your in-game experience there's two other sources of information that we're going to have to look at pretty consistently one is your performance display which you can find on your game settings right here and it'll give you fps and if you're packet lossing and stuff like that and then the other is your task manager performance tab and we'll get into that once we need it the order of fixes are presented from an easiest fix to a little bit more complicated to much more complicated all right let's get to it lucky for us apex does this for us pretty much where as soon as you load into the game you will be able to select your server with a button that will appear down here now apex tries to help you out where once the servers have been pinged they will give you the lowest server possible now they also know that to lower your lobby times you may need to switch servers so you may end up on a different server than you've selected anyway there's ways around that but that's not what this covers also note that if you have a negative one you're not going to be able to connect to that server at all you know just for fun so don't try next we need to look at our graphics processing unit or gpu before we get to the complicated stuff make sure to search your brand name in the search bar and check if your drivers are updated a couple different ways to see if our gpu is doing the job and the first and easiest way to do it is by playing with our frames per second setting this setting i'm talking about is the one in game now we have to kind of compare two things when we're working on this our frames per second our quality settings and having our task manager performance log running in the background when we play games. The reason you need all three of these is because your GPU will tell you if you're at 100% while trying to meet the demands of whatever frames and quality settings you set. This can reduce your stuttering because if you're overtaxing your GPU, well, that's where some of that stuttering occurs. It's not necessarily on the server side. Related to your graphics setting is your monitor itself. So the first thing that you wanna check is your resolution, especially if you are having problems with your graphics card not being able to keep up. An easy way to simplify the load on it is to change your actual resolution right here. You can also do that in game with this setting here, um, but if you wanna do it universally, then that setting there will automatically apply it. The next piece that you wanna know is in your advanced display settings down here. Clicking that will tell you your refresh rate on your screen. Now, a lot of times, I don't know why, but a lot of times it will not naturally go to the highest amount. It may default to something else. And when you're playing with your frames per second, you'll want to note that if you're capped out at, you know, let's say 80 hertz or something like that, you're not gonna wanna go to above 80 frames per second in game because you're getting no benefit. You're pushing out, well, you're getting a very, 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 very minuscule benefit. You're pushing out more frames per second than your monitor can even handle. So you're not really seeing it the way that uh, it would be intended. Looking at your CPU and RAM, it's more about looking at your system as a whole and how is it running. Now, it'll obviously affect Apex. For example, my mouse polling rate affected the CPU issue, which then affected me in Apex because it performed a stutter. Now, I already talked about mouse pulling in a short. Um, I'm not going to talk about it more here. Instead, we're going to talk about background applications and startup apps. Just as a side note, if you have like a mid-tier CPU and about uh, 16 gigs of DDR4, you should be pretty good, but it's always a good thing to double check. Some easy ways to reduce the load that your memory is uh, working is number one, just reducing the number of windows that are actively open. If you've got seven tabs of Chrome open in one window, that's terrible. If you have seven windows of Chrome open, that's also terrible. Get rid of those when you're playing online. The other part this applies to is apps that are running silently in the background. Every time you install an application, there's probably some checkbox that says okay to run in the background. And mostly that's a fine thing. But if you're having a hard time getting your GPU to run at capacity, go to this setting here and check what apps you have actually active in the background. This includes things that are controlling like your RBG lighting, or um, you know if you've got Razer looking for updates. Sometimes reducing the load there can also help your PC perform just overall, not just in Apex. So for network, we're talking about the things in and around our environment and then our service provider. So service provider, we can change that. It's pretty easy if we need to, but as long as you have 10 megabytes of upload speed, you should be pretty good to game online. 
So assuming your internet provider is giving you that upload speed you need, now we gotta talk about your home environment and what's around your home environment. If nothing else, take all this technical talk as an awareness piece as to why sometimes you don't have a good experience wirelessly. So your wireless network can include gizmo watches, smart garage doors, smart refrigerators, your PC, your cell phones, all those things trying to talk to each other or the internet. Most routers will automatically do a channel selection for you. It's usually called something like dynamic channel selection, but your specific model might call it something else and how to turn it on and off is gonna be up to you to look at a user manual. But the point being, there are a lot of different channels, a lot of complicated things that go into it. So plug your device in if you can directly, it solves a lot of problems. And if that's not possible, an option that you have in some routers is prioritizing a source of information. So to do this, you'd have to find your IP address for your device, which is totally possible, but I won't cover it in this video and then going into your router settings and seeing if you can prioritize that uh, IP address. Now, if you don't wanna go that far, you can at least make sure that it's operating on the right channel. So there's the 2.4 and the 5.0. 2.4 is slower transmission rate, but it goes through walls and things like that much better. Whereas your 5.0 is much shorter range. It doesn't go through walls quite as well, but it is a faster transmission speed. So you can select if your device is gonna be on that 2.4 or that 5.0, and maybe that'll make a difference for you. So that's like a two minute version of wireless troubleshooting. Obviously people get master's degree in wireless and networking uh, systems. So there's a lot more to it, but I'm just trying to point you guys in the right direction so you can identify where is that lag coming from and is it within my control? Most of the time you should be able to help yourself out quite a bit by looking at that GPU, your memory usage and the game server. I hope this helped you get in the right direction. Good luck with your games and I'll see you in the next video.